Hey, how's it going? It's so good to see you. Sorry for the delay second Weeble video. Um, I got really busy from like a couple of filming gigs and my one-year-old son got this nasty stomach bug for like days. Uh, it wasn't easy coming up with full content when my son got mm, unfull. Uh, kudos to all the creators out there with kids though. Uh, if you don't have any kids yet, we'll talk about how that's gonna be like in a separate video. Joking, I love my kids. They're worth it. So in today's video, I want to address two things. Why is it that we keep seeing Weeble test footage video on YouTube that are so wobbly? They're calling this Weeble Wobble. Yeah, that's actually kind of clever, but I have a theory on why some of these may be the case. And second, we're going to talk about what my thoughts are on this Weeble now that I used it extensively for about three weeks. Let's get to it. Why might Weeble wobble? The default sensitivity setting on Weeble Lab, in my opinion, doesn't give you the smoothest results. Dead zone is just way too big and slow, so when you try to compensate the drift, it just gives you this jerky movement. This is a setting I use on my gimbal. I changed the pan follow rate to 70 degrees per second from the default 60 and changed the pan dead zone to 3 degrees from the default 5 degrees. What this essentially does is that it gives you a tighter control over the gimbal on the side to side axis. This does rely more on the operator and your preference may be slightly different but the point is this gimbal's default setting is just not the best for smooth footage but it does offer a variety of settings that could be customized for that particular operator. Here, this is the untouched footage using the settings that fits me. I realized I slowed that down on my last video so you couldn't truly see the actual results. Uh, mind you, that's a shaky wooden bridge and a heavy Sony F1.4 35mm Zeiss Prime lens. Uh, by the way, if you had a hard time getting to that setting, I found a slightly easier way to get to that setting. Tap on the information icon, which is the second bottom icon on the right. And from there, tap on the switch camera. From there, click on the gear setting icon. And there you go. Another factor may be the fact that on Sony cameras, when using the cable connection, it will turn off the in-camera steady shot. To control the Sony cameras remotely via this cable, you have to turn on the PC remote control on the settings, which is basically turning off the steady shot. No steady shot means wobble weeble. Another setting that could be the culprit here is the motor power settings. Factory default setting is the low mode. The low power mode exists so that gimbal can save the battery and which is fine for like very small lenses but the setting needs to be at medium to get the best result for most camera setups. The high settings in my finding is too responsive and it can jerk your movement if it's not a good match for that load. And this last variable can sound like a little stretch but you know I think there's some truth to it. I think gimbal users who are only used to large gimbals like Ronin S are just not used to smaller gimbals. I'm coming from 4 years of using manual glide cam and a little over a year on the Crane version 2. I also have 1 year old who is a light sleeper in an old house with creaky floors. Um, I'm used to walking like a ninja. Now if a person has never used a small gimbal before and expect this gimbal to take away a lot of the up and down movements for them, this pony ain't gonna do the trick. I'll do a standalone gimbal technique video one day, but the operator has to have these techniques down in order for these smaller gimbals to be fairly smooth. Now, I'm not claiming to be the best gimbal operator by any means, but I wanted to test out the limits of this Weeble Lab by using the heaviest practical lens I could find and by applying all these variables I just mentioned. So this happened like a couple weeks ago. Okay, so I just spent three hours trying to balance this thing. Sorry, I'm gonna kind of be quiet because my kids are asleep upstairs. Hope you can hear me. This is the Sony G Master f2.8 16 to 35 millimeter lens. It's one of the bigger lenses, um, and I'm able to go to 16 millimeter, which will push the, the optics all the way front. So I thought maybe if I buy counterweights and reverse the quick release plate so the quarter inch thread is in the back and I'm able to screw this on. Now I thought maybe I can push the camera forward enough that I don't have to remove the eyepiece. But nope, uh, I tried many different ways. I tried Manfrotto plate, the 500 series plate. Um, I tried different kind of Arca Swiss plate mounts and nope, the only way this thing works and probably same with a lot of the heavier lenses too is to remove the eye cup and then it clears the back motor and you're able to go to the under slow mode and then we'll hit the back. Um, so I do have a wedding to shoot tomorrow. I'm a second shooter for this wedding. 
Um, I'm gonna try this out, see how it works. I do have a GoPro mounted on the side to kind of give you a cool perspective. So hope that works. Let's see how it goes. The second shooter wedding gig I was referring to was actually with a guy named Vu from MVU Films. He also did a Weibo Lab review on YouTube, so you may have seen his videos. In fact, the 16 to 35 millimeter lens was actually his. Uh, he was cool enough to let me have it for the wedding shoot the night before, so I can properly balance it. Oh, you thought I could afford a G Master lens? Ooh, no, I'm not gangster enough. According to Vu, G stands for gangster. So, was it worth it for Vu to have me balance this lens the night before? Heck yeah, that lens looks so epic on this gimbal. I was impressed at how smoothly it was able to tilt up while in follow mode, even with the front heavy 3 pound camera setup. I'll link the wedding teaser that Vu made from that wedding at the end of this video or in the description so you can see all the Weeble gimbal actions. Vu also used Weeble Lab that night as his only gimbal setup with the heavy Zeiss 35 and 55mm f1.4 so check it out. If you're a Canon user though, just be uh, open-minded when watching all the review videos by Vu. Um, just, just saying, you've been warned. So lastly, what do I think of this Weeble Lab now after about 3 weeks of usage? Um, what do I start? Alright, let's start with the battery life. Uh, I'm seeing that the battery life can vary a lot more than Korean version 2. When you put on a heavy lens like the G Master 16 to 35mm, this thing like barely lasted an all day shoot. Uh, that wedding I shot with Fu, I used the gimbal for the first look, the ceremony, and the reception. That's only about 5 to 6 hours on the gimbal, uh, but towards the end, I had to go conservative because the gimbal showed me about 10% of battery. So that 10 hour rated battery is for smaller lenses, just means that anyone doing all day shoots with heavier lenses should definitely get second pair of batteries. If you like to live on the edge and like to record while your memory card is reading like 0 minutes, then no extra batteries needed. Alright, hold on guys, I gotta change my memory card. Alright, another thing I noticed was that I miss having the reverse mode I had on the Crane version 2. Weeble can go upside down on pan follow mode, but as you can see, when you pan, nothing happens. So Weeble Lab utilizes the underslow mode, so when you try to pan follow something at a very low angle, you can't just simply rotate the gimbal easily just by rolling your fingers like this. On the Weeble, you have to pivot the whole gimbal with your wrist and that's something I'm still getting used to and wasn't getting the smooth follow shot like I was used to. So you probably noticed that I have this second handle attached on this Weeble. That's because I don't have the quick release tripod plate yet and this was the cheap alternative to like unscrewing the whole tripod every time I had to go under slung mode. I'm not gonna leave a link to this particular one though since I can't recommend this one. This rubber handle was by Canvate and I got a black version from Amazon. Problem is the quarter inch screw on this one gets loose and it comes off <laughs> which will be really convenient during an important shoot if it gets stuck on your gimbal. If you find a higher quality light handle, it could work if your hand is small. What's wrong with big hands? Well, nothing other than the fact that it might not fit when you're in an underslung mode. I have a skinny little hands but look how much room I have here. You have one inch of room for your fingers, and if it doesn't fit well, well you might as call this red knuckle mode. Something to consider. Like any gear, I'm going to find cons and pros, and those are the two more cons that I could find. Pro still stands though, I mean like, look how small this gimbal is. I thought the Crane version 2 here was small at first. The compactness and the ease of quick setup still trumps these minute issues since I am aware of them. I mean like, what other small gimbal with this much power can you put in like on top of monopod and raise it up like 10 foot height? I don't think I can pull off that move with Moza Air 2 or Ronin S. So hopefully this video helped whether you're in the market for a new gimbal or if you already have a Weeble. I know there are a lot more things I could cover like the timeless mode and an active track mode on the app but I'm gonna wait a tad bit more until the app is a little bit more mature. Besides, I have a new camera to play with. Try to guess what camera this is in the comments below and you might win. Nothing. Yeah, no giveaways yet. I just spent like $900 on this camera, so I'm broke. Yeah, one day though, this could be a good giveaway camera. There's your hint right there. As usual, I'll try to hang out by the comments section for the next couple of days, so I'll see you around. And you might win? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs>